What's up everyone, David here and last week I released a new DC News episode of course talking about the sales numbers for Shin Megami Tensei Nocturne HD Remastered and the unfortunate Sega situation all the way up in Asia, Japan. The reason why actually I didn't talk about the news that came up about Sega saying that they want to go multi-platform is simple. They've been saying that for multiple times and I wanted to do this video. So today I am here to spend a certain number of time because I think I have a lot to say so this video might be a bit long. Is Sega slash Atlas finally going to go multi-platforms with their games, with their IPs? And by that I mean with their ports of older games, with their remasters, and with their new releases. So let's talk about it, I definitely have a lot to say. Last August, Satomi was present at an investors meeting and he firmly said that the team at Sega's were extremely surprised by the massive success of Persona 4 Golden on PC. The team had a real desire to bring more older games to new platforms, like the PC, for example. Once again, a few months after Aruki Satomi was present at the latest Sega Sammy Investors meeting on November 6, 2020, so last week. He was talking about the arcade situation in Japan that we talked about in the last news episode. If you didn't watch it, I will link it right here so you guys can check it out. Cool episode. But he also had one section of his presentation, once again, talking about the expansion of business rollout. Out. So basically, what is their plans in the near future? What he had to say is that yes, he wishes for Sega to port older Atlas and Sega games to multiple systems. And I quote what he had to say, systems other than the Xbox, PlayStation and the Nintendo bubble. In other words, the PC. Today, I want to give my idea and predictions on what I think we will see in the future from Sega following this recent announcement. But before that, I want us to take a look at what happened in the last year with Sega releases. So basically, which game came out and on what system. I think this will help us to speculate about what's going to happen next for Sega and Atlas. So January. Um, January was interesting. Yakuza Like a Dragon released on the PlayStation 4 exclusively in Japan. The game came out last week in the West, releasing on the PlayStation 4, the Xbox One, and most importantly, exclusively on Xbox Series X for next-gen consoles. That's right, Microsoft has a deal for um, all the publicity and marketing campaign before the game. We saw Yakuza Like a Dragon multiple times in the Xbox presentations, never on Sony's shows. And of course, the game is just a time exclusive, so Yakuza Like a Dragon is set to release on March 2nd, 2021 on the PlayStation 5 as well. Yakuza has always been a PlayStation exclusive in the past. Microsoft struck a deal with Sega for a time exclusive with Like a Dragon, and now they have multiple of their games on Game Pass as well. For Nintendo? Well, Yakuza Kiwami... No. Yakuza 1 and 2. Yeah, the original PS2 games came to the Wii U exclusively in Japan. And it flopped, of course, because Kiwami 1 and 2 were available elsewhere, so why would you want to play the PS2 games on a dead system? Like, if they were expecting for this port to sell, I mean... <laughs> this game flopping is as su surprising as Persona 4 Golden being a massive success on PC. Okay, now let's talk about February. So February was also an interesting month. Of course, Persona 5 Scramble, The Phantom Strikers came out on the Nintendo Switch and the PlayStation 4 in Japan exclusively once again. Honestly, a good first move for Persona outside of PlayStation. Then also in February, we got Yakuza the Remastered Collection and the game was released exclusively on the PlayStation 4 worldwide. So for now, no Xbox release, no PC release, unfortunately. Bayonetta and Vanquish 10th Anniversary released on PC, Xbox, and PS4. I know that this is a title that is only published by Sega, developed by Platinum Games, but still, I wanted to mention it. March, Persona 5 Royal released exclusively for the PlayStation 4 in the West. Uh, the game released multiple months before in Japan, but we got the release in the West. It did really well, but... PS4 exclusive, of course, so no Switch release, no Xbox, no PC release for this one. April. April was also interesting because once again, Sega proved that exclusive exclusivity doesn't always mean success for them. Sakura Wars, a reboot for the Sakura Wars series who's been absent from game consoles and systems for multiple years, unfortunately. This game is great. And it didn't do so well, unfortunately, since it was a release exclusively on the PlayStation. And I think that's kind of sad because it's probably the type of game that you want to play on a portable system like the Nintendo Switch, for example. 
So that's kind of sad, but hey, we'll talk a bit more about Psycho Royce once I'm done with uh, looking at all the months and releases for the year. Streets of Rage 4 released everywhere in April, so that's good news. That's a release for PS4, Xbox One, Switch, Steam, so definitely a great release and it did really well. Revival of the Streets of Rage series. Uh, I heard that people think this game is really good. Now we have to go all the way to June. So June we have Persona 4 Golden, who released on Steam surprisingly a massive success for atlas and sega i don't think that's very surprising but hey it was a massive success big revenue for them because it's of course the porting process was probably not that hard the remaster was probably not that hard to do and they had over 500 thousand copies sold on steam so definitely a big hit for them and hopefully they want to remaster more games like this one and bring them to pc in july katrin full body released on the nintendo switch months and after almost a year after the PlayStation 4 version. Exclusively on Switch now because the game's already on PS4, not on PC and not on Xbox, for whatever reason. September, 13 Sentinels Aegis Rim was released exclusively on the PlayStation 4 after the Vita version was cancelled. Now, 13 Sentinels uh, did... It, its first weeks of sale in Japan were meh, uh, but it picked up. Like with the more, uh, the the word to mouth um, helped the game, and it ended up selling pretty well in Japan. For now, uh, the game flopped hard in the West. Obviously, it released a few months before the launch of next gen hardwares. Bunch of other games were coming out at the same time. The marketing campaign was garbage, and it's a PS4 exclusive. So for all those reasons, it flopped once again. Exclusivity. Maybe not the best idea, especially for this big story focused visual novel game. I'm honestly, I think the game would have done extremely well if it were to be released on, let's say, the Switch and the PC, for example. And this game was a Vita game, so there's no way that it cannot run on both those systems, of course. Now, September, we had good news in September. Uh, Nocturne HD Remastered released in Japan on Nintendo Switch and PlayStation 4. Lots of rumor for a Steam release at some point as well. I think it was that in mind that a Steam version was in the works. So that's good. That's another great first step. Now, with all of this into consideration, it's easy to see that Sega and Atlas has a big they have a big preference for uh, the Sony PlayStation because most of their games are Sony exclusives and as we can see, it's not always a good idea for them. On a more positive note though, they finally started to put the Yakuza series out of PlayStation, Mainline Persona out of PlayStation with P4G on PC and Yakuza on Xbox and Game Pass. So those are great news. And with both, they saw success. 2020 was a first step in the right direction for Sega and Atlas. Hopefully they keep going that way. When we look at the official numbers and of recent releases and also the fact that Sega keeps publicly telling their investors and their fans that they want to go multi-platforms, I really do think that the future is bright for Sega and Atlas. Now last week when Nocturne released, we actually got the sales numbers for the game and the Switch version did slightly better than the PlayStation 4 version. So again, that shows that those games, those RPGs, put it on multiple systems. And if the Nocturne came out on PC as well, of course, now it was just a Japanese release, but let's say in the West, they released day one with the other system, the other versions, a PC version for Nocturne. It might even outsell the other versions at this point. So honestly, they should do it. They definitely should do it. I'm sure the work is not that hard to bring it to PC, but hopefully they they, they do this. Now, but now, now is finally the time for me to give my predictions of what I think we might see in the future in regards to Sega going multi-platform with their releases. First of all, I certainly feel like Sega will keep pushing the Yakuza series on other systems. We will continue to see multi-platform releases on Xbox, PlayStation, and maybe even more games on PC as well. So that's great. Hopefully they keep it that way. Will the series come to Nintendo? I hope so. I think uh, it would do well on the Nintendo systems. We definitely cannot look at the shitty ports that they did for the Wii U uh, as a comparison. That's just not fair. Just like Catrin Full Body on Switch. I mean, it was for sure gonna flop because it came out one year after the PS4 version. So, yeah, everyone who want, were inter interested in that kind of niche game already bought it on PS4, myself included. So, 
yeah. When it comes to other Sega IPs like Sakura Wars, I feel like they will probably go on other systems like Nintendo and PC at some point as well. Hell, there even was a recent interview with the director of the latest Sakura Wars games and he confirmed that he would like to see his latest entry in the series come to other systems like the PC and the Nintendo Switch. At this point, it's just a matter of time. Atlas games are where it gets very interesting. I think that with the success of Persona 4 Golden on Steam, they will consider doing two things in the near future. First, which I think is a given, is a port of Persona 3 on Steam. Personally, if I had to choose what they're going to do with this port, I would like them to add and refresh the animations and cutscenes from FES, but also add the ability from Persona 3 Portable to control your whole party. We talked about that in the Discord server, a lot of people don't necessarily care about that. Uh, personally, for me, I just can't go back to the old combat system from the game. It is not broken or anything, it's just not for me, so this is what I would like them to do. But what I think they will do is do a very minimal remastered like they did with Nocturne of FES. That's what I think is possible, but hey, it would do well, and I'm down for that, so... Now, another thing that I think they will probably do is put Persona 4 Golden on other systems like the PS4 and 5 and maybe even the Nintendo Switch. That would be great. People have been asking for mainline Persona outside of PlayStation for a long time now. They did it with the PC. That's amazing, amazing news, honestly. The game is now very accessible to anyone. It, it is not stuck on the Vita anymore, so that's great news. But I think Sony fans won the game on their consoles and Nintendo fans as well, so that would be great. Uh, will we see P5R on PC at some point? Probably on Switch, maybe, it's hard to tell, uh, but I don't have any specific predictions for that today. Um, yeah. Now Shin Megami Tensei of course is the most interesting and exciting part for me. I think that with the success of Nocturne HD in Japan and the success that it will get in the West, yes I'm that confident, they will want to port older games. I mean it's... a very easy job for them to do, especially with how minimal they keep their ports when it comes to quality. So if they are to do other ports, I made a video on the matter before if you want to check it out. Again, I'll link it right here. But it's a video talking about how I feel like Digital Devil Saga 1 and 2 are definitely next in line when it comes to the remastered treatment that Nocturne, Nocturne got. So I can't wait to be able to play more SMT games on modern systems. Any system would be great. Hell, they should even put the games on Xbox, give it a chance to to at least see how it's going to do. So yeah, definitely some uh, some good news. With all of this in mind, I do feel like we should we should consider uh, Sega saying that they're going to go multi platforms in the near future. I feel like they're serious, and I feel like they're going to do this at some point. I definitely expect lots more support for PC in the near future, and I also feel like they're going to want to support more the Nintendo Switch. Uh, now Xbox, it's a bit hard to tell. I would definitely like them to support more the system, especially since we know that Microsoft is doing some efforts trying to bring Japanese developers into the fray. So. I would definitely like that uh, at some point. So that was a great talk. Honestly, I, as I said, I had a lot to say. I don't know how long this video will be, but I'm definitely curious to hear you guys' thoughts on the matter. Do you think that we should take Sega seriously, saying that they want to go multi-platform with their IPs? Do you think we'll see mainline Persona outside of PlayStation and PC now? Do you think they will port more Shin Megami Tensei games? Do you think Yakuza is going to keep expanding its audience? Please let me know down in the comment sections below so we can talk about it. As always, if you like the video, a thumbs up, it helps. And if you like the content, anything RPGs, Shin Megami Tensei, Atlas and Persona, please consider subscribing. Thank you all so much for watching. See you next time.